everyone, I am Niharika and in today's lesson we are going to talk about earthquakes. Well, the word itself sends shivers down my spine. Well, yes, earthquakes are scary. Well, they occur suddenly without any warning. So yes, it's a natural calamity and an earthquake is a result of, um, you know, sudden energy that's released uh, from the Earth's crust that creates uh, seismic waves. And that's exactly the reason why the ground uh, shakes violently and that typically causes a lot of destruction. And with the recent Nepal's devastating earthquake, Here's a lesson for you that would help you to talk about earthquakes and also since all the news channels are flooded with the news of this earthquake, you will be able to understand the news better. So let's get started. Now these are some technical or scientific terms uh, related to earthquakes. Uh, so we have rector scale. Now, rector scale is, um, you know, the energy that's released by an earthquake. Well, that energy is measured on a rector scale. Like uh, how we measure the temperature, uh, maybe on a Fahrenheit or a Celsius scale. Well, an earthquake is measured on a rector scale. Okay, the next one is uh, main shock. Now, when an earthquake occurs, uh, this is large earthquake which kind of uh, destroys everything. So that the largest earthquake in a sequence is called a main shock. So I would say the main earthquake or the largest earthquake. Now what follows after the main shock is the aftershocks. Um, well, we call it as aftershocks. Now aftershocks occur occasionally and uh, well, especially if there's a big or a large earthquake that has happened, it's inevitable that there would be aftershocks that would be felt by the people in the area of the main shock. So aftershocks are uh, smaller earthquakes. that occur occasionally after the main shock. Okay, uh, the next one is uh, seismograph. Now, a seismograph is, um, you know, to measure the instrument, uh, I'm sorry, it's the instrument to measure the vibrations of an earthquake. So, seismograph is an instrument. The earthquake is measured on a rector scale, however, the instrument used to measure the vibrations of an earthquake is called a seismograph. And the person who studies, um, or I would say a scientist who studies about uh, earthquakes is called a seismologist. Scientist who Okay, so scientists who studies earthquakes are called as uh, seismologists or seismologists. Okay, um, so these are some technical terms that we learned. Uh, I've not got into a lot of detail because if you are really looking to read or understand uh, more in detail, well, you need to Google. Okay, uh, now we're going to look at the effects of an earthquake. Now, of course, if uh, an earthquake has occurred, there are going to be devastating effects, right? Like something that happened in Nepal. So here are some effects. Um, so we're going to learn about it, that would, that which will eventually help you to talk about earthquakes. So collapse. Now, of course, um, the ground shaking can collapse uh, buildings and bridges, right? So that's what happens like when the 
ground shakes violently there's a lot of disruption right and uh, the buildings start collapsing the hotels the bridges they all collapse so there's a lot of destruction another one is uh, disrupt services now of course the first thing when an earthquake occurs is that all the services are disrupted uh, like your phone services electric services or um, even gas services okay so all these services are disrupted so even if someone uh, like that's what happened in Nepal people were trying to uh, connect to the people uh, in Nepal and they were unable to do so the reason because all the phone services were disrupted okay uh, the next one is uh, trigger landslides well, yes, uh, because of an earthquake, there's a big possibility that it would trigger landslides, uh, that is falling off uh, rocks, okay? And then the next one is avalanche. Well, in fact, that's what happened uh, because the earthquake happened near Himalayas and uh, in fact, you must have read it in the newspaper or heard it in the news that there was a possibility of a uh, huge avalanche that is uh, snow falling from the slopey regions okay like a big ball of snow and then of course tsunami well remember the japan earthquake well that's what happened the destructive ocean waves that's tsunami so an earthquake can also cause or trigger tsunami so these are the effects of an earthquake and now let's have a look at some words that would help you to describe earthquakes so here are some descriptive words that you can use to talk about an earthquake uh, we're going to begin with disastrous well disastrous means uh, that causes a lot of damage Well, it's obvious uh, if there is a big earthquake that has occurred, it is going to be disastrous. The reason because a lot of things would be damaged, right? So this is one of the words that you can use to talk about an earthquake. The next one is destructive. Now, why would we use the word destructive? Well, the reason because a lot of things are destroyed because of an earthquake. Uh, buildings collapse, bridge collapses. And and you know, uh, temples and old heritage uh, structures are all destroyed and it's all messed up everywhere, right? That's exactly the reason um, an area that's uh, affected by an earthquake can be called destructive, okay? It was a very destructive earthquake, okay? The next one is devastating. Uh, devastating, well, you can use this when you are talking about uh an event of an earthquake well of course if an earthquake happens if an earthquake occurs everything is going to be devastating because uh people get injured people die okay um the whole area uh, looks awful so this is one of the words that you can use uh, the next one is catastrophic. Well, catastrophic is, uh, again, very similar to devastating. Well, especially uh, because when something is damaged or an area which is completely destroyed, the area is ca catastrophic. Okay, so that's how you can use this word. And then the last one is horrifying. Well, of course, it's not going to be a pleasant experience for you right it is going to be horrifying now even when you end up if you are not there in the area where the earthquake occurred and you're just watching the news channels even the images are so horrifying because they're disturbing you get disturbed you feel nervous about it right so that's another word that would help you to talk about earthquakes and then i have something for you which is drop, cover, and hold on. Now, uh, it's always nice to be prepared for such disastrous natural calamity, right? So, uh, do practice this because if you are well prepared, well, you can beat the earthquake well. So, follow this drop, which, is, which means that you drop on the floor because when you drop, you know, uh, you would not fall anywhere, okay? So you drop on the floor, 
you cover yourself so you cover your neck and you cover your head with your hands and you hold on so you hold on on a sturdy thing so probably you cover yourself uh, under a sturdy table or under a sturdy desk and then you hold on to it okay so this is a good way of protecting or being ready for a natural calamity like an earthquake so follow this practice this okay so hope this lesson is helpful to you use these words uh, to talk about an earthquake and i'll be back with a new lesson till then you take care and stay safe